I'm very excited today to join you all at this very important stage of uh, a great journey. About two years ago, I had a conversation with uh, Mo, uh, that's Mr. Mohammed Yaya, but everybody uh, calls him Mo, the dynamic UNDP representative in Nigeria, Dr. Dikpe Olu, our special advisor uh, to the president on economic affairs, and uh, Otsumbani Adebayo, the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment. The three of them had been talking about what to do about the challenge of solving uh, graduate employment, unemployment. This was an issue that our government considered perhaps the most important socioeconomic one. Mr. President had in fact said that uh, he didn't think that there was a bigger problem that our country faced other than uh, unemployment because according to him, it fed every other thing. It fed insecurity, it fed the instability, it fed poor growth in the economy. So clearly, unemployment is by far, in a way, the most important uh, problem for us. But the problem was not just finding jobs for millions of young people, but perhaps even more importantly, ensuring that young people had these types of skills that industry required, that businesses required, that even public service required. In other words, the employer today is not just searching for a string of degrees, but a person who has the basic, basic skills or who has the sorts of assets that are required in the workplace. So the three gentlemen proposed the idea of a paid youth internship mentorship program a program where young men and women will work with the private or public sector for a year in which they will, by a process of on-the-job mentorship, imbibe employability skills, and be mentored by leaders in the host organizations where they work. This, we all agreed, will be a partnership between the federal government, the UNDP, and other partners the EU joined the conversation and alongside the UNDP have become perhaps our most committed sponsors. Today, that partnership has grown to include over 5,000 businesses who are offering places for work and mentorship to our first set of Jubilee Fellows. The President launched the Nigeria Jubilee Fellows Program last year in August last year. And the idea is to have every year 20,000 Jubilee Fellows working in establishments all around Nigeria, learning work skills, being mentored by entrepreneurs, business managers, business managers, and experienced public servants. And they will be paid every month for the entire period of their service. So the birth of the Jubilee Fellowship is an important statement on the new and dynamic ways to solve economic problems today. In other words, this must be a collaboration between government, between the private sector and civil society or development partners, or what is called today the third sector. It must be individuals in these sectors coming together to talk informally and then developing the big game-changing ideas. And this is how we have seen the uh, Nigeria Jubilee Fellows Program come to be. But let me also say a word or two to the very powerful and energetic gathering of potential entrepreneurs, business leaders, public sector leaders, and the movers and shakers of business and industry today and in the future. And if you are one of these uh, potential entrepreneurs, business leaders, uh, public sector leaders and movers and shakers of business and industry today, then perhaps I should hear you make some noise. Okay. I, we heard only a few, we heard only a few. Maybe there are only 20 here who will eventually become movers and shakers. But if there are more than 20, then let's hear more than 20. Yeah. Good. 
But just before, uh, but just before we let you be, I, I'd like to just offer some pieces of advice. And really, I suppose um, after a while, if, if you've been long enough uh, around this world, you may have some things to say to people coming behind you. The first piece of advice I'd like to give you is this. So you're going into organized workplaces at a time when everyone is looking for quality people and jobs are relatively scarce. But the point then is that you must be prepared to make an impact on your employers. You must be prepared to make the sort of impact that will make you unforgettable. So you must be prepared to make the sort of impact that gets people to recommend you, not perhaps not even necessarily in their own organization, but in some other organizations. In other words, how do you make yourself a valuable employee or a valuable colleague to your co-employees? The answer is to understand what is required in the modern workplace. You need not just a competent, knowledgeable t a person. I mean, this is a skill that's required. Obviously, you must be knowledgeable, you must be competent, but you must be a team player. What every employer wants is a good team, a team that works closely. And the rule today, as you've seen from even how this program was birthed, is collaboration working together. You need to be the employee who is willing and ready to work with everyone, not the employee who is always trying to look better than everybody else, but one who sees the place of employment like a football team, where working closely together, your team scores goals and wins. If, that no one person can make up the team, but collaboration is so important. Being a team player is so important. A selfish, self-seeking player, no matter how smart you are, you will destroy the work of the team. But you can only be a good team player if you understand the game, you understand how the organization works, and you are competent. So even if you are a receptionist at an organization, you must read up and ask questions to understand how that organization works. What do they do here? What are they trying to achieve? How do they work? What are their strengths? What are their challenges? How do you help solve some of their problems? How do you best support those who are doing the work? I once asked a young man who was working at a large establishment, the name of the managing director of the company that he worked for, but he didn't know. He didn't know the name of the managing director. There was another lady this time who served as a youth copper in a consulting firm but couldn't tell me the substance of one single consulting job that the firm was engaged in. According to her, she was merely an administrative officer. Yes, that might be the case, but you must be curious enough, you must be interested enough in the business of your employers to go beyond what is happening on your desk. You cannot be competent if you don't know your organization, the business it does, and its goals. The last but one point I'd like to make is that competence today is not just knowing what you are trained to do. It's also about being knowledgeable about a lot of other things. And it's about being prepared to learn, to study, to ask questions every day. The best worker is one who can multitask. So let me give you an example, for instance, and I want to embarrass my photographer today. She's a very good example. As you can see her, um, Tolani, the one with the hat. Now, Tolani is a photographer, right? Uh, she started off trying to be a doctor, but then abandoned it and then uh, became a photographer. Now, not only is she a photographer, and a very, very good photographer at that, but she's also a storyteller. In other words, she can write well, and she can write good stories. But not just that. She can fix electronic equipment because she learned to do it. So if anything goes wrong here, she can fix it because she learned to do it. She's also very good at writing programs, at writing computer programs, because she learned to do it. 
So even if I sack her today and say, Tolani, thank you very much, your, your services are no longer required as a photographer, she will simply pivot to the next job and she can find her way around and make a living for herself. So today, what is required is to be a multitasking person. And there are so many opportunities. And you've got to take those opportunities. In my day, all I learned to be was a lawyer. It was so difficult to get trained to do anything else. But today, almost every time you turn on your computer, you find so many opportunities, all sorts of online training. And I think you should just take all those opportunities. Let me end by saying that you are young and educated at the most advanced moment in human history. This moment that we're in is the most advanced in human history. In my day, the technological advancements were, of course, you can imagine, light years away. I never imagined that anything like a text message was possible when I was your age, just wasn't possible. Nobody had ever dreamt of it. But today, just think of the possibilities. So you are the most advanced moment in human history. And many of you are proving this. This is the greatest and the most advantageous moment for any young person. And many of you, every day, are proving this. Don't listen to those who say, the good old days. Nah, they usually have a bad memory. Anyone who tells you about good old days, they have a bad memory. Because if you remember well, you remember that those days were not so good. You are not so great. But these days are the best days. And you need to take advantage of them. For example, look, just a few uh, years ago, since 2015, in the midst of two recessions, and we've had two recessions from 2015 to now, six tech and innovation companies who are now described as unicorns, have been established in this country. And they are worth over $1 billion each. And that's why they're described as unicorns. They were established by men and women, young people like yourselves, under the age of 30. Most of them went to school here in Nigeria and had never gone to school anywhere abroad. Most of the entrepreneurs, OPE, for example, you know, Flutterway, Vandela, all of those companies, they are now worth over a billion dollars. Many of them started in 2015 and up to now. So you, the opportunities are limitless. No matter what people say about the challenges, it is in those challenges that people make the greatest breakthroughs of all. It is the challenges that have the opportunities lying there somewhere. And you've got to pick up those opportunities. But you don't even have to be the entrepreneur to be a success. You can be the great software engineer. You can be the great administrator or the manager of men and materials. Every day presents that great opportunity. It's time for you to seize the moment and achieve your own best dreams. So let me again thank our partners, the UNDP, the EU, the private sector, the 5,000 uh, businesses that have offered places for our uh, fellows, and especially Sterling Bank, who have now uh, refreshed their support and are going to do even more. Thank you all very much. God bless you.